All right, so as a lot of you may know, um, one of the most talked about individuals right now on the internet is none other than Mr. Jeffrey Dahmer. Several different Netflix shows, um, YouTube documentaries, um, just, you know, different sources of information about him, what he's done, who he is, um, and everything like that. Nonetheless, um, I'm going to tune in, listen to some of these uh, facts here, and see what we come across. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Number 10. Intended to build an altar out of remains. During his hours of interviews conducted after his capture in 1991, Jeffrey Dahmer confessed that he planned to use the remains of the victims he collected to make an altar to himself. I even went so far as planning on... Uh setting up an altar with uh, the uh, 10 different uh, skulls and skeletons. He detailed his very specific plan via the photographs he took of his victims and in a drawing featuring two full skeletons and several skulls. All was to be arranged on a black table set up in his apartment with a chair facing the shrine, making it a, quote, place for meditation, which he viewed as an area where he, quote, could feel at home. However, he was caught before his plans were realized. Number nine, he talked his way into the White House. Turns out Jeffrey Dahmer was a master manipulator long before he fooled law enforcement. In his graphic novel, My Friend Dahmer, former Revere High School classmate John Durf Backdurf recalled a class trip to Washington, D.C. when Dahmer did the unthinkable. The high schooler lied to White House staff in order to meet then-Vice President Walter Mondale. He managed to get himself and his friends a private tour of Mondale's office. In the film adaptation of the same name, the students meet the VP in person and have a brief conversation. Sorry, excuse me. Just a second. These kids are with the newspaper, their school newspaper from... Ohio. From... Ohio, that's a great state. A fellow Midwesterners, I'm from Minnesota. However, in the comic, they see him working in his office. Still, that is quite the con. Number eight, suspected of killing Adam Walsh. Based on eyewitness accounts of the horrifying day Adam Walsh disappeared, some now believe little Adam may have fallen victim to the cannibalistic killer. After he was discharged from the military in March 1981, Dahmer decided to move to Miami, Florida instead of returning home to Ohio. He worked in a deli, but ended up living on the beach and drinking. When news of his crimes came out in 1991, reports came in from witnesses who allegedly saw him at Florida's Hollywood Mall in July 1981, where little Adam Walsh went missing. Dahmer was there. Uh, four people who were at that mall identified him after he was arrested by Milwaukee police. They saw his photograph and said, that's the guy. That's, that's one thing I think about, like, imagine when something like this comes out, like all the people that were either close victims or like a neighbor or met him at the supermarket or, you know, crossed paths with him at some point and just did not know who they had just met until they found out who it was that they had met. Like what that must do to a person, like what that realization has to feel like. Like that's crazy to me. That's, that's something I that we encountered. Dahmer, however, denied any involvement. And since he had just admitted to killing 17 over a span of about 13 years, investigators found it unlikely that he would lie about committing any further crimes. Dahmer killing Walsh is a strange theory though. Number seven, planned his first attack at 16. As a teen, Jeffrey Dahmer fantasized about an attractive man he regularly saw jogging by his house every day. Once his fantasies became too great, he hatched a plan to attack the man and bring him into the woods to commit non-consensual acts. One day, he hid- By the way, I saw this in the, in the series that they created. And I stopped going running. In the bushes with a baseball bat waiting for his target to pass. He thought he would wait in the bushes with a baseball bat. This guy would come by and um, he'd bonk him in the head and he'd have this guy. Fortunately, the man chose not to head out for a jog that day. 
after this first attempt, Dahmer never tried to attack him again. He cited this incident as his first real pursuit of violence against another person. It was at this point that Jeffrey's paraphilic fantasies began. Number they said, hold on, I'm sorry. They said he didn't attack. Jog that day. After oh, this guy. Fortunately, the man chose not to head out for a jog that day. After this first attempt, Dahmer never tried to attack him again. He said. Okay, not only is that the grace of God that that guy didn't go for a jog that day, but I know in the most recent one, they just, the most recent Dahmer, they won series they just put out with Evan Peters. I believe he like, he tried to attack him. So. I'm not sure what actually happened on that day, if he didn't show up or if he if he did, but I recall him attempt like showing popping out of the bushes with a bat and like freaking the guy out, so hmm, I wonder what actually happened then. Cited this incident as his first real pursuit of violence against another person. It was at this point that Jeffrey's paraphilic fantasies began. Number six. Parents fought over his brain. What? I didn't say a thing, did I? The bizarre and disturbing nature of his unspeakable crimes made Jeffrey Dahmer a particularly fascinating serial killer. Studying how his mind worked could potentially find an answer as to why he had these violent desires, making him an ideal subject in criminal psychology research. His mother, Joyce, shared the same view, and after his death in November 1994, she wanted his brain donated to scientists at California's Fresno State University for research purposes. We have a chance here, Lionel, to find out why he was the way he was. Was it something he was born with? Maybe there was some small tumor somewhere? Well, I think each of us has our own idea about why Jeff was the way he was, don't we? His father, Lionel, however, was against it, wanting to move on from the whole tragedy. The former married couple went to court over the matter, which ultimately resulted in his brain being destroyed. There were some scientists at Case Western Reserve that claimed they could tell what, why he acted like he did. And it's not possible with a dead person. Number f hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I would have liked to have known um, if they could have done that study to study his brain and see if there were any sort of abnormalities, uh, which I'm sure they would have found, but like, how do you know that these are the reasons that he did what he did, you know, like, how do you know he just wasn't just evil, you know, like that kind of thing. Um, but his mom took, if you watch the series, his mom took lots of, she was on a lot of medication while she was pregnant with him. Um, I also believe that that possibly could have altered his um, cognitive development like caused him to become what he became. Directly, no, was that the sole source? I don't want to say that, but I just find it hard with all the medication she was taking. She was, the way they exaggerated the medication she was on, I find it hard for that not to have had an effect on what he grew up to be. Five, received a lot of money in prison. But Believe it or not, there are many people in the world who idolize serial killers, and Jeffrey Dahmer was no exception. As seen in the Netflix series, he received fan letters with gifts and requests for drawings. Will you send me back, like, a drawing or something? And I sent you five dollars. And according to Wisconsin's Columbia Correctional Institution records, Dahmer also managed to save up thousands of dollars while in prison. By March 1994, the inmate had received letters from all over the globe, reportedly racking up more than $12,000 just from donations. While some letters were of the suggestive nature, others reached out wanting to discuss religion, provide support, or just become pen pals. Number four. His death parallels his first murder. In the early hours of November 28, 1994, Jeffrey Dahmer was cleaning the prison gym when he was killed by fellow Columbia Correctional Institution inmate Christopher Scarber. Another inmate on cleaning duty, convicted murderer Jesse Anderson met a similar fate. Scarver, also serving a life sentence for murder, reportedly attacked Dahmer with a 20-inch metal bar from a piece of workout equipment. Dahmer died soon after the incident, and as chance would have it, back in 1978, 
a teenage Jeffrey Dahmer killed his first victim, Stephen Hicks, with a dumbbell. Number three, took home a fetal pig. One of the most widely known facts about Jeffrey Dahmer's childhood is that he had a fascination with the internal organs and bones of dead animals, going so far as to collect roadkill. And took them back into the woods, unknown to any of us, and dissected them just to see what was on their inside. He kept his collection in a hut by his house, filling it with preserved remains in jars of formaldehyde. That's enough, Jeff. Hey, Dad! No, you are spending too much time in here. The Netflix series shows high school students dissecting fetal pigs in a science class. Afterwards, Dahmer asks permission to take one home to practice, which the teacher agrees to. You think I could take one home? Just to practice? To be honest with you, Jeff, I've been uh, teaching for 22 years and no one's ever asked me that. Uh, like this sure. However, the real Dahmer was like, rumored you feel to guilt for like, like, in a sense, I, I think I would feel like I enabled him. Even though, yes, you had no under, like you had no awareness that he was doing what he was doing or that he would end up doing what he did. Like, to be that teacher... And to be like, man, I remember the day I let him take that pig home. Like, do you feel, I, like, what does, y'all know what I'm trying to say. But like, I just, I wonder what that feels like to be that individual, to have come across him in that way. Stolen the preserved animal from the classroom, likely as a prank. In a 1994 interview, the convicted murderer admitted to taking a fetal pig home while in high school confirming everyone's suspicions. In ninth grade, uh, in biology class, we had uh, the usual dissection of uh, fetal pigs. And uh, I, took, I took the remains of that home and, and kept uh, the skeleton of it. And I just started branching out uh, dogs, cats. Number two, tried to steal a corpse. And what did you plan on doing? Just wanted to lay with him. In an effort to resist giving in to his murderous compulsions, Jeffrey Dahmer sought out alternative ways to satisfy his dark desires. At one point, he stole a mannequin from a store and brought it home, but it ultimately did not work. In the struggle to control his fantasies, his behavior became more abnormal. He um, took a mannequin from a department store, thinking that if he had that mannequin with him and sleeping in bed with the mannequin, etc., that maybe he could control the impulses that way. One particularly macabre idea Dahmer had was to obtain the corpse of a recently deceased male. Dahmer told me that uh, on one occasion he had seen in the newspaper an account of a young man who was killed on a motorcycle, and uh, he fell in love with the individual just from the photograph. He saw an obituary in the newspaper for an 18-year-old young man he found attractive. And after attending his funeral, Dahmer tried to dig up his freshly buried grave. But it proved too difficult since the soil had already hardened. It was March and the ground was too hard and it would have taken forever, so... But like, that dude's family would have never known his body was almost dug up if this stuff didn't come out. Like, if Jeffrey never got caught, if Jeffrey didn't become who he ultimately became and he, like, stopped at some point. Like, a lot of this stuff, a lot of his close calls, close call victims and all this stuff, like, would have, we would have never known about it. Those people would have never known that that dude's body was almost dug up and just mutilated by this dude if he had never been caught and he had never told this story. Like, imagine hearing that for the first time. It's like, wait, whoa. Like, that is mind-blowing. That is insane. But I wish I could have dug him up. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all... 1989, while Dahmer lived with his grandma in West Allis, he went to a bar and convinced Anthony Sears to come home with him. 
After engaging in intimate acts, Dahmer drugged and beheaded Sears, though the killer claimed he hadn't intended to commit a crime before setting out for the evening. Dahmer then kept both Sears' head and private parts in a box. Mr. Dahmer had become extremely disturbed in his thought processes, and the idea that the people he killed would somehow live on through him was part of that disturbed thinking. As if that wasn't disturbing enough, the criminal stored the box in his locker at the Milwaukee Ambrosia Chocolate Factory, where he worked nights as a mixer. Imagining human remains inside a chocolate factory just turns our stomachs. Were you almost flaunting it? Yes, but that's how strong the compulsion was. That's how bizarre the, the desire was. I wanted to keep something of, of the person with me. Careful who you're around, man. More of this story. Never underestimate anybody. Man, that is crazy. Um, but if you haven't seen this series, um, the most recent one that's up on, on Netflix with Evan Peters, man, check it out. If you're not into that kind of thing, I hate to say it that way, but if, um, check it out. Check it out. Um, yeah. It's not for everybody. You got to have a strong stomach to, to sit through it. But they definitely did a, I would say they did a great job with portraying that part of him. So, um, but yeah, hope you guys enjoy, man. Hope you learned something new about Jeffrey Dahmer that you didn't know before. Why that would benefit you in life, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> if you made it this far, you watched the video for a reason. So I hope you got what you were looking for. And um, yeah, thank you for sticking around. And I'll see you in the next one. Now I'm going to go get de-loused because that was nasty. Peace.